Hello everybody, it's time for another vlog, this time on Jurassic World, the latest movie in the Jurassic Park franchise and the first one in well over a decade. Didn't think they would ever make another one of these, but then again, I never thought they'd make another Mad Max either, and here we are. This one takes place about 20 years after the events of the first movie, where John Hammond's vision has finally come true. Somehow. You would think all those people dying in the first movie would have been a huge setback, but I guess they found a way around it. And at this point, the park has been in business for about 10 years, and apparently interest is starting to decline. Although, the park appears to have about 20,000 people in attendance, which seems like pretty good numbers to me, but... I don't know what their maximum capacity is, so maybe it normally holds 50,000 in a good day. I don't know. So the park's corporate overlords have decided they need to create a new attraction to spike interest. And apparently the best way to do this is to genetically engineer a brand new dinosaur. Because just plain old everyday dinosaurs don't cut it anymore. Which sounds like utter bullshit to me, but there it is. And sure enough, they do create this brand new dinosaur by basically mixing together the DNA of a bunch of other dinosaurs, and they give birth to the Indominus Rex. And surprise, surprise, it all goes horribly wrong. Who could have predicted? Why is it that humans are so stupid that they keep doing shit they're not supposed to do? We keep trying to make artificial intelligence, we keep fucking with Liam Neeson's family, and we keep trying to bring dinosaurs back to life. None of these things ever work out well. Ever. Well, as you may have heard, there are a lot of people that are saying good things about this movie and a lot of people saying it kinda sucks. Personally, I'm kinda torn because really, to an extent, both camps are right. There are a lot of things this movie does well, and there are a lot of things it does very, very badly. I suppose we can start with what it did well. For one thing, the acting was pretty solid across the board, even from the child actors, which is a rare thing nowadays, but yeah, they all did very well. The special effects are pretty good for the most part, although there are a few missteps here and there. There are some CGI dinosaurs that don't quite look as good as the rest, and there were a couple of CG blood splatters that just looked so obviously fake. But most of the effects do look very good, and the 3D... Uh, it was... adequate. Overall, the direction was pretty good, the movie is very well shot, and the action sequences are a hell of a lot of fun. For the most part, Michael Giacchino's soundtrack is pretty good, although there are a few places where it seems a bit... off, mainly when he tries to incorporate the John Williams score into his own. Now, just as an example, think back to the first movie, and the very first time you hear that main theme, where the scientists have all discovered, holy shit, there are dinosaurs on this island. It's a dinosaur, it's a dinosaur, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? You know how it goes. And it's a really strong bit of music to accompany a very powerful and majestic scene. Now, in Jurassic World, the first time we hear this theme is when two of the characters are being led from the ferry to their hotel room by their tour guide. And then they look out onto the hotel balcony and see a view of the park, which really, from that angle, just looks like any other theme park. It might as well be SeaWorld. Doesn't have quite the same effect. But I admit I am kind of nitpicking here, and overall the score was actually pretty good. Also, it appears this movie is just forgetting Jurassic Park 2 and 3 ever happened. And personally... I am okay with this, because Jurassic Park 2 was kinda weak, and number 3... Well, let, let's just not speak of number three. Now, where the movie kinda suffers is with the script. And considering it took four people to hash this script out, I guess I really shouldn't be surprised. This movie has a serious lack of likable characters. Pretty much all of them are written to either be assholes or idiots. Or both. First, we have Chris Pratt, who is something of a dinosaur trainer. He's kind of a raptor whisperer, if you will, which sounds incredibly corny, and it is, but the way they handled it in the movie worked surprisingly well. I was actually impressed. Unfortunately, his character is also a sexist know-it-all douchebag. And this is supposed to be our hero. This is the guy we're supposed to cheer for. And it's kind of hard to cheer for him when he's acting like a douchebag. I don't want to cheer for a douchebag. I know that should go without saying, but you'd be surprised how often Hollywood forgets this. 
There's a scene that was posted online that shows the first meeting in the movie between Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and the way he acts in that scene is pretty much how he acts throughout the entire movie, and sometimes he can be insufferable. When he's actually just dealing with the dinosaurs, he's fine. When he's dealing with human beings, fuck that guy. And speaking of Bryce Dallas Howard, I really do not like what they do with her character. She's basically in charge of operating the entire park and spends way too much time focusing on her job and not enough time focusing on her family. She has no idea how to work with kids, no idea how to work with animals. Basically, she's a walking cliche. And somehow she and Pratt actually end up together in the movie, which makes no fucking sense because there's no way two people like this would ever end up together. And she also spends the entire freaking movie in heels. Whether it makes sense for her to be in heels or not. There's even a scene towards the end where they show her running in slow motion and the camera actually pans down to her feet so you can see her running in heels in slow motion. And I will give her credit, she runs better in heels than most people do in sneakers, so good for her. But man, it looks silly. Vincent D'Onofrio plays this guy who works for the park's corporate overlords at InGen, a company that's been present throughout the series, and he, of course, wants to find some way to weaponize the dinosaurs. Because that can't possibly go wrong, now can it? Nope. I see no way anything bad could possibly happen in that scenario. There are also these two kids in the movie who are Bryce Dallas Howard's nephews who have been sent there by their parents to spend the weekend with their aunts. For the most part, they're okay, although they are kind of stupid. There's this one scene in particular, it's where they're riding around in that big hamster ball. I'm sure you've seen that in the trailer. When I saw that in the trailer, I assumed that this was some kind of computer-guided tour, but no, apparently they actually have the ability to steer this hamster ball wherever the hell they want to go inside this paddock, and there is nothing to stop them. Even after the big fucking dinosaur gets loose and they're called back because of an emergency situation, they're like, hey, we're VIPs, we can stay out here a couple minutes longer. And apparently there's nothing to stop them from not going back at all. Like, this seems like a pretty heavy design flaw. You would think there would be some way to remotely take over the hamster ball and bring it back, but apparently if someone doesn't want to come back, all they can do is just ask them politely, Pretty please with sugar on top come back, and if they don't, oh well. What idiot designed this park? And then they find a hole in the fence and they say, hey, let's do some off-roading. Yeah, because wandering around in a restricted area in a park with fucking dinosaurs can't possibly go wrong. You are stupid. And again, no way to bring the hamster ball back, so the people who designed it are stupid. Everybody is stupid. B.D. Wong is in this movie. He is apparently the only returning character from any of the previous films, I assume because everyone else said no, and they even made him an asshole. He was apparently in charge of creating the Indominus Rex, or whatever the fuck it's called. I just call it the BFD, the big fucking dinosaur. And even when shit goes horribly wrong and people start dying, he still will not tell anyone what this thing was made of and how they can possibly stop it. He's just like, no, nah, that's classified. Fucking douchebag. Really, the only two likable humans in this movie are Jack Johnson and Lauren Lapkus, who play a couple of technicians who work in the park's control room. They are actually a lot of fun whenever they're on camera. Honestly, I found myself liking the dinosaurs a lot more than I liked most of the human characters, especially the raptors. The raptors were actually pretty fucking awesome. But yeah, the humans just suck. The movie also makes it pretty obvious who is going to make it out alive and who is going to get eaten. With one exception, there was one character who died in this movie that I did not see coming because, unlike everyone else who pretty much had it coming for one reason or another, this one really didn't do anything wrong, and yet this person ends up dying the most horrifying death in the entire movie. I don't know how that happened, but there it is. But otherwise, you know exactly who's going to die. Oh, all these troops that are going out to try to recapture the Indominus Rex with non-lethal weapons. Yep, they're fucked. Vincent D'Onofrio, the obvious villain in the movie? Yep, he's gonna die. The one black guy in the entire freaking movie? Yeah, you know he's toast. Although he did last longer than I expected. There were also a couple of plot points involving the two nephews that 
really didn't seem to go anywhere. The movie starts out with the older nephew saying a very long and tearful goodbye to his girlfriend, which is hilarious for a high school romance. And even the dad points out, hey, he's just going on vacation. He's not going off to war. He'll be back in three days. And while he's at the park, he is staring at pretty much anything wearing a skirt the entire time. And occasionally swaps back to his phone where he looks at a picture of his girlfriend. And it seems like it's kind of suggesting, hmm, maybe he's thinking about moving away from this relationship. Maybe he's going to attempt to cheat on his girlfriend. It goes nowhere. And if you're wondering why the parents are not accompanying the kids on this trip, because surely they would like to see the dinosaurs too, well, apparently their plan was to send the kids off on their own for the weekend while they can quietly get a divorce. Which seems like a really stupid plan, because what exactly are they going to tell the kids when they get back? Surprise! We're divorced! Like, really? What? what what's the end game here, exactly? But it really doesn't matter because after about the halfway point in the movie, this is never brought up again. So did they actually get divorced? Who knows? Who cares? Now, I've seen a lot of comments online suggesting this movie is self-aware. That it's trying to have fun with other blockbuster tropes. That it's making fun of other big movies out there. For example, the big fucking dinosaur that they genetically engineer. That's supposed to be apparently making fun of Hollywood's endless need to create pointless sequels that are always bigger and badder, really just as a cheap cash grab. And yeah, I can see that. That actually kind of makes sense. Except Jurassic World is still doing the same thing. It's still creating a bigger and badder sequel that's completely pointless just as a way to make money off the nostalgia. And there's also a scene in this movie where they're making fun of endless product placement. Like, apparently, the BFD needs to have a corporate sponsor, which really pisses off Jack Johnson's character. He's like, oh, man, that's... That's just pathetic. I mean, what's next? Are we gonna have a Pepsi-saurus or a Dorito Don, something like that? And that was actually a pretty funny scene, but that's not the only place in this movie where there's product placement. It is all over from start to finish. It is loaded up to the gills with product placement. And I just have to wonder, if you are so blatantly exploiting the very thing that you're supposedly satirizing, is it really still a satire, or are you just claiming it's a satire so you can have your cake and eat it too? So overall, this movie is kind of stupid. The characters are just not very likable. The dialogue is awful. But, you know, it almost makes up for it with the action sequences and the special effects. The big fights between the dinosaurs are actually a lot of fun to watch. So I'm kind of torn on this. I suppose... If you can get past the awful human characters and just sit back and enjoy the spectacle, it's a decent enough popcorn flick. I wouldn't say it's worth full price, and it's definitely not worth a 3D surcharge, but as a matinee, you could do a lot worse. And I think I've ranted about this movie long enough, so I'm going to end it there. Till next time, take care.